let us continue our discussion on uh, weak duality theory so before that i want to give you an example where optimal solution doesn't exist but geometric multiplier does so i want to minimize e raised to x such that x is less than equal to 0 oh it's not minimize it's in inf in x is in r okay so what's the lagrangian that's equal to e raised to x plus mu x okay and of course zero is the optimal solution uh, i mean the infimum for this particular problem and there is no solution so no solution right because x equals so the infimum is achieved when x is equal to minus infinity but minus infinity doesn't really reside in the set of real numbers so therefore there is no solution relation problem now if i take so i want to show so uh, claim mu star equal to 0 okay so this is the geometric multiplier here and we can check that so inf of l x mu star equal to 0 x in r is equal to infimum x in r e raised to which is equal to 0 which is equal to okay is that and that is saying that if we found some theoretical uh, input value for which we achieve 0 that's the optimal value. That's the optimal output value. Uh, right. Yes, but you somehow ascertain that whatever mu star you came up with is a geometric multiplier. Um, so let's look at the set S. S equals. This is my GX, this is my FX, the curve S like something like this. Okay. Particular hyperplane. with mu star equals to 0. So with the normal 1 for this particular line, um, then we see that this entire curve is actually in the positive half space of this particular hyperplane. Okay, and that's why it's a, this is a valid geometric multiplier, mu star equal to 0. Above claim is kind of mathematic, so therefore mu star equal to zero is the geometric multiplier. This one is sort of graphically saying the same thing that mu star equals to zero is a geometric multiplier. So the solution is a geometric multiplier in this particular situation. Aside from appealing to um, the sensitivity theorem, which in this case would work since what does that do for us? Have we, have, we haven't discussed that yet, have we? What does knowing a geometric multiplier do for us? Because that doesn't tell us, well, if we just make it equal, then we're good, right? It's something else entirely. Yeah, we will get to it in a bit. We haven't really 
we talked about it. Um, so what I wanted to show you is that, is that in this particular problem, there is no solution. It's a convex problem. There is no solution. So there is no Lagrange multiplier. But there is a geometric multiplier. OK? And that's going to be important. And that's going to be equal to 0. OK? Um, so there could be problems where Lagrange multipliers don't exist, but geometric multipliers do. Okay. Now remember that Lagrange multiplier required x star to be optimal and but we don't need any sort of regularity or whatever, right? It's it's all geometric. Okay. It has no uh, strings attached to it. It could exist or it may not exist. Okay. Any question? on this okay now the next uh, uh, topic is weak duality theory theorem um And so I want to I want to try and motivate the discussion using a graphical thing. So using uh, I don't know the map of Africa that we were studying yesterday, uh, not yesterday but on Monday. So this is my gx. This is my fx. This is not what Africa looks like, but it's a close approximation. Okay, uh, okay, not a close approximation. It's a very crude approximation. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to draw three lines of three different colors uh, with three different values of mu. Okay, and all of them will contain this set S. This is my set S. So it will contain this set S in the positive half space, and it will be barely touching it. So one of them is this. The normal is mu one, mu one comma one. The other one is going to be let me call this mu three comma one and the third one is going to be like this and this has normal mu two comma one. So what do we know about these intercepts? Do you remember? So we know that these intercepts are inf of I don't want to clutter it. So this is inf of L x comma mu two x in capital X. This is inf of x in capital X, L of x comma mu three. <coughs> Excuse me. And this point is inf of x in capital X, L x comma mu two, mu one. And I want you guys to, after you draw it, time. Okay. 
I also wanted to let you know that mu1 is less than mu2 is less than mu3. So remember. Okay, so I drew three hyperplanes with different values of uh, the normal. Um, so mu1 is small, then I kept increasing the value of mu, so I got to mu2, then I kept increasing the value of mu even further and I get to mu3. And what I notice is that at, yeah. If, so we're, we're treating a general case here, right? So yeah. mu, any mu is a vector? So typically, yes, mu would be a vector. Yeah. So what does it mean exactly if mu1 is less than mu2? Is that element one? So, think, okay, so currently for this particular graph, think of them as two-dimensional. Uh, we will get to the weak duality theorem in full generality where it will become clear what exactly do I mean. Okay, so currently just think of it as a two-dimensional figure. So there is one inequality constraint and there is of course one objective function and this is what the set S looks like. Okay, so what do we notice? So for mu1, the intercept was small, okay. And then as I increased the value of mu2, the intercept was moving upwards. It went all the way to this particular point, which is the intercept at mu2. And then I kept increasing the value of mu even further and then the intercept started going downwards, okay? Now where is f star? Where does f star sit? So f star is actually right here. That's my f star. Excuse me? Why not take the other one? Which one? Uh, this is, this is. Oh, but there, if that is the whole set S for the valid. Yes. Like so this is gx greater than zero. This is gx less than zero. Okay, so I need to find the minimum of the function in this particular area. Okay. So what we are getting at is a very important result. That's called, that's the weak duality theorem and this is a proof by picture of weak duality. We'll do a rigorous proof uh, later on in this class. So what we have is as I increase the value of mu such that the hyperplane is, so such that the set S is in the positive half space of the hyperplane and it's touching the hyperplane at some point. What we notice is as I keep increasing the value of mu at some particular point, there is a maximum of this particular function as a function of mu. So there is a maximum and then again it starts going down. But that maximum is actually lower than the function f star, the optimal value of the function f star. Okay, so let me write it down. I define q of mu as in for L x mu x in x. Okay, and I notice that q of mu2 is greater than or equal to q of mu1. q of mu2 is greater than or equal to q of mu3. Okay, these are the two, uh, the two facts we notice from this figure. And more importantly, q of mu2 is less than or equal to f star. Okay, so this is fact one, fact two, fact three, and then fact four is mu two is actually arg max of q of mu, mu greater than or equal to zero.
okay and these imply that q star which is equal to q max of q mu mu greater than equal to 0 is less than equal to f star Okay, questions. Okay, just like KKD condition was one of the important result, KKD theorem was one of the important results in optimization, in constrained optimization. This is perhaps one of the most important result in the whole theory of optimization, like the entire theory of optimization from unconstrained to constrained to whatever. Okay, extremely important result, weak duality theorem. This is exactly what weak duality theorem is. Okay, and of course this is a proof by picture, but let's make it more formal. Okay, let's make it more formal and prove this in complete generality, the weak duality theorem. Yes, we will. But that will be for convex problems. Oh, I see. Everything is convex. So then, um, and the weak yeah. follows from the strong for convex theorems. So, okay. So what's the strong duality theorem? So remember, there is this gap. Okay. So this is the optimal. This is Q star, and this is F star. And in this particular problem, uh, in the Africa problem. Uh, there is a positive gap between f star and q star, okay, and this is known as duality gap. Um, in, it will turn out that in convex problems, uh, where everything is convex, everything is differentiable, everything is pretty nice and benign, there will be no duality gap, so q star will be equal to f star. Okay, so in the most general case, q star is less than or equal to f star, but in the case of convex problems, we will see we will prove that Q star is actually equal to F star. So that's the strong duality theorem. Most of the problems you will encounter, if they are non-convex problems, you will not have strong duality. Okay. That's just a fact of life. I mean, uh, so the claim one, Q is concave. Okay, I started with a non-convex, very general problem. I defined my Q mu in this particular fashion. And it just so happens that Q is concave. Okay, so Q has a lot more structure than the Lagrangian. So how do we prove that? So let's say Q of alpha mu 1 plus 1 minus alpha mu 2 is equal to inf over x in capital X L of x alpha mu 1 plus 1 minus alpha mu 2 which is Okay, so the Lagrangian is actually a convex function of mu. In fact, it's an affine function of mu because this is 
equal to fx plus alpha mu 1 plus 1 minus alpha mu 2 transpose gx. Okay. By the way, this expression is for the Lagrangian, not with inf. Okay, so inf is you of course have to take inf here. Let me put a bracket here. Okay, so is that so the Lagrangian over x with alpha mu one plus one minus alpha mu two, I could take alpha outside. And I can decompose this uh, function into two separate functions. And then what I have is greater than or equal to in x in x alpha l x comma mu one plus in x in x one minus alpha l x mu two. Okay, so in for sum is greater than equal to sum of inf and this is equal to alpha q of mu 1 plus 1 minus alpha q of mu 2. Okay, so I started with some extremely weird non-convex optimization problem and I arrived at a, at a function which is the dual function which is a concave function, very nice structure. Okay, now I want to define this domain D so then claim 2 I am going to define the domain D as mu greater than or equal to 0 such that Q mu is greater than minus infinity so we don't want we want to remove the points in the domain of Q where Q is taking a value of negative infinity and then the claim is that D is convex. Okay. Any questions so far? No? Okay. So how do you prove this part? So Q of alpha mu 1 plus 1 minus alpha mu 2 is greater than or equal to alpha Q of mu 1 plus 1 minus alpha Q of mu 2. So if, and this, this follows from this expression, so this is, I'm just rewriting these expressions compactly here. So if mu1 and mu2 are in D, alpha is in 0, 1, then Q of mu1 is greater than negative infinity, Q of mu2 is greater than negative infinity this implies Q of alpha mu 1 plus 1 minus alpha mu 2 is greater than negative infinity. Okay? And that proves that the convex sum is also part of D.
question? No? Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's consider this optimization problem. I want to maximize, no. So we started with the original problem. I want to minimize fx such that gx is less than equal to zero. X is in capital X. And then I constructed a dual problem which is to maximize q of mu mu greater than equal to 0 mu in capital D okay where q of mu is defined in this particular fashion Okay, and I'm of course assuming that all these min and max exist and you don't have to take inf and soup and all that stuff. Of course, if you have inf and soup, you can just replace them, replace the min and max by inf and soup. And the weak duality theorem says, weak duality theorem, Q star is less than or equal to F star. Okay, so Q star is the optimal solution here. F star is the optimal solution here. So where do you use this fact? Okay, so so okay, so this part is a convex problem. So you can use any of your gradient descent kind of methods to solve this problem. And you get the value of Q star. Okay, and you know that it's a global maximum because this is convex, this is convex, this is convex. So it's all it's a global maximum of this particular function. Um, in some situations, your Q could be non-differentiable, but there are methods for solving non-differentiable optimization problem. Okay, so, so through some method, you're able to find Q star. Now, you have come up with a heuristic to solve this problem. Okay? Uh, and using the heuristic, you get some solution X tilde, Okay, so, so why is this useful? So let's say you have a heuristic which gives you x tilde as a possible solution. You compute fx tilde. You know that this is greater than or equal to f star, which is greater than or equal to q star. And q star is something that you know. So fx tilde minus q star basically gives you the error or an upper bound of the error in the optimality of your heuristic. Okay, is that clear? So let me let me raise a little bit to make this point more formal. So a heuristic gave me, so you came up with a heuristic algorithm to solve the original problem. You could solve the dual problem exactly to get Q star. And so what you have is fx tilde minus f star, which is the error, is less than or equal to fx tilde minus Q star. Okay, 
So you get an upper bound on the error that your heuristic produces. And if the upper bound is small, it means that the error is small. It means your heuristic is approximately optimal. OK, so that's where this, dual this weak duality is very useful. Yeah. arg max of q so that's a good point so if there is no duality gap which means that q star is equal to f star then the arg max will be the geometric multiplier for the original problem okay but not uh, not if you cannot prove that there is no duality gap okay and as i said for most non convex problem there will be duality gap, and so you cannot say for sure whether the point mu star at which the maximum is achieved is a geometric multiplier to the original problem or not. In fact, in this case, geometric multiplier doesn't even exist. So the book says that there is, it is possible that there is no geometric multiplier even though there is no duality gap. Okay, So just having zero duality gap doesn't necessarily mean that you will have a geometric multiplier. Okay, so let me, uh, so is this, is this point clear to everyone? Okay, so I want to start erasing some of the stuff on the board, so I'm assuming everyone has noted it down. And then I'll write the next proposition that's there in the book. So I've given you a pictorial proof of weak duality theorem. Uh, the original proof is there in the book, not very difficult uh, to understand, but we won't go into the actual proof. Uh, I want to give you the proposition. No duality gap implies set of geometric multipliers is equal to the set of optimal dual solution so that's number one number two there is a duality gap. So Q star is strictly less than F star implies there are no geometric multipliers. Okay.
So we started with uh, started this course with assuming that functions are differentiable, sets are convex, everything is nice, regular, whatever. Okay, and we came up with lots of algorithms to solve those problems. And then we came across problems like traveling salesman problem and facility location problem, two very important integer programming problems, where we realized that everything that we have developed so far is kind of useless because the set is non-convex, functions may or may not be differentiable, and so on. Uh, actually, the functions are defined over integers, so there is no notion of differentiation. Um, and so we needed to come up with tools and techniques so that we could solve those problems, uh, integer programming problems, and say with certainty that, look, the solutions that I have found is good enough. And we want to quantify what that good enough is. Okay? What, what does it mean for a solution to be good enough? And so we looked at this whole problem of optimization, constraint optimization, uh, over an arbitrary set. So this could be an integer valued set, uh, so a set of integers. This could be some arbitrary nonlinear function. This could be some function. And we have this optimization problem. We looked at it geometrically okay, by defining this set S creating hyperplanes that contain S in the positive half space and doing lots of manipulations with those hyperplanes. And then we came up with this dual formulation. Okay, so this is the primal problem, this is the dual problem. We turned out that dual problem is always convex problem, so it's, it's a convex function over a convex set. And I could solve this dual problem to get the value of Q star and whatever heuristic I come up with for solving traveling salesman problem or for solving facility location problem or for solving any general non-convex optimization problem, I could give a certificate of the upper bound on the error using this method. Okay, So that's the train of thought for this particular chapter. Then we realize that, look, there is something called a duality gap. So we came up with this, uh, we, we stumbled across this weak duality theorem. So Q star is less than or equal to F star. And then we realize that, oh, look, there could be duality gap in some problems, as is visible in this particular situation. And so what does it mean? Well, it means that if there is no duality gap, and you can solve this problem to get argmax, then it is guaranteed that that will be the set of geometric multipliers. Okay, so the set of optimal dual solutions is also the same of set of all geometric multipliers. And then if there is a duality gap, that is Q star is strictly less than F star, then there are no geometric multipliers. Okay, there's nothing much we could do about it. Okay, and in these situations, coming up with the certificate of optimality is extremely difficult, but you can give a certificate of approximate optimality using this expression. Okay? You have a heuristic, you, get, you evaluate fx tilde, you compute the difference of fx tilde with q star, and that gives you an upper bound on the optimality error for your heuristic. Okay? And this is used time and again for many heuristics that have been proposed to solve uh, specific optimization problems. Okay. Uh, in the case of, and you know, I, 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 I can't say for sure, but in the case of electricity market, I've read in some paper, and since I haven't done that research myself, I don't know what goes on behind the scene. But I've read a paper which says that this guarantee in error is of the order of 1.5 or 2% okay, in electricity market. So that's a very big optimization problem. 2% uh, error means millions of dollars. Okay? So if you could somehow reduce this error by coming up with a better heuristic, you will save millions of dollars. Okay? Um, I'm sure you could come up with similar examples in machine learning and in other, you know, FedEx optimization problem, Delta's optimization problem, American Airlines optimization problem. Come up with a better heuristic, 
and you could guarantee saving millions of dollars by coming up with better optimality guarantee. Um, which is not to say that you will earn millions of dollars, okay? <laughs> okay, Delta will save or American Airlines will save millions of dollars. Yeah. But how would you know if there is no duality gap? So it's only known for convex, pro I mean not it's only known, but for convex problems you can show that there is no duality gap, okay, in very general, gen under the very general conditions. Mm -hmm. But then if you have non-convex problems, then it really depends from problem to problem. Yes. 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 So you will be able to solve and get the value of Q star, okay, and you will get some mu star, but it's just that that mu star is not a geometric multiplier for the original problem. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure I understand. In general, are you saying that geometric multipliers imply uh, optimal solutions? Oh. Uh, no. Them only so you're talking about this proposition, right? The first one. Yeah, so what the first one says, there is no duality gap. Let's say I give you a problem and you can show that there is no duality gap. So F star is equal to Q star, okay? Um, and you are able to solve this optimization problem and get a value of mu star, okay? Then that mu star is also a geometric multiplier to the original problem, okay? So geometric multiplier is defined for the original problem Optimal dual solution is defined for the dual problem. And when there is no duality gap, the two are actually equal. Okay? Now you could have a case where there is no duality gap, but instead of doing maximum, you can only do supremum because for whatever reason, you can't converse to the maximum point. Okay? It's out of the domain or something like that. And in that case, you have no geometric multiplier. Uh, because the set of optimal dual solutions is empty. Okay, you can't, there is a supremum, but there is no maximum. And I'll give you some examples in, uh, in the uh, homework problem, so you will see it for yourself. Okay, is that clear? Okay, everything is clear so far? Now I'm going to, yeah. How can we show the uh, there there is no the gap? How can we show that there is no gap? So for the convex problems, we will do it. Maybe next class. Uh, yeah, I think this class we don't have time. But in the next class, we'll do it for the convex case. For the general case, I mean, it's very problem to problem dependent. So there is no fixed recipe that you could use. Okay, for convex problems, there is a recipe. We'll just use that. So optimality conditions so x star mu star optimal solution geometric multiplier uh, and optimal solution and geometric multiplier if and only if x star in x gx star is less than equal to 0 mu star is greater than equal to 0 x star is argument of Lx mu star x in capital X. Fourth is mu j star gj x star equals to zero for all j. This one? So you say x star is an element of argument 
Yes, x star is an element of argmin. So you could have multiple argmin. Okay, so just pick whatever element you want to pick. So can someone tell me what's the difference between these conditions which look very similar to the KKT theorem that we studied? What's the difference between the two? Yes? So for, uh, part two, should, um, in KKT theorem, isn't it that these start to be less than equal to zero? No, it's greater than or equal to zero. Sorry? The third, third condition? condition? Yeah. So what was it what was it in the KKT theorem? Yes. the first order. Right. So if you remember from the KKT theorem, we had X star optimal and regular implies there exist mu star such that, of course, 1, 2, and 4 holds. 1, 2, and 4 holds. And gradient of x, L of x star, comma, mu star is equal to 0. OK, that was KKT theorem. So instead of, so, so here we required regularity of x star, OK, in the KKT theorem case. Here we don't say anything about regularity. Because regularity may not even be defined. Differentiation may not even be defined for these functions, OK? So we got rid of regularity. It's an if and only if condition, whereas this was just a necessary condition for optimality, right? So x star optimal is kind of given. Uh, this is an if and only if condition. And 1, 2, and 4, ho it, it holds for the case of uh, KKT theorem. But this particular condition, where x star is a minimum of the Lagrangian, was not there. In fact, all you needed was, not, not all you needed, but all you could conclude from this statement was that the derivative, the first derivative of the Lagrangian vanishes at x star. Okay. Actually, there was also a second order condition. So d transpose L x star mu star d is greater than or equal to 0 for all d in v x star. Okay, so there was this condition as well. Uh, which kind of said that, OK, along certain directions, x star is a minimum. Uh, but this one is saying it's an argmin okay, of the entire Lagrangian. So it's much more stronger. It's far more stronger than uh, this KKD condition. OK, but that requires the geometric multiplier to exist, which may not be the case all the time. Yes? So are you saying that the um, geometric multipliers do not require differentiability? No, it doesn't. In fact, remember, we started with integer optimization problems, traveling salesmen, and uh, facility location problem in the previous class, where differentiability, where the set itself is discrete. So you can't define differentiation of functions over that discrete set. OK. OK. Any further questions on this? OK. I think that's a lot for you guys to, uh, to, to think about for the next class. So in the next class, we'll talk about what happens when you have equality constraint. We will construct dual of linear programming problems. So you will see explicitly what the dual looks like. How do you construct the dual? Uh, you will have 
Const you have construction of dual problem in the current assignment, so you will do the same thing. So what I'm going to do for linear programming, you will do the same thing for quadratic programming in the assignment. And then we will talk about no duality gap in the case of convex problems. So see you in the next class.